He wants to see a photo of my prop airplane going to McCall, Idaho. It's on my Instagram account. <laughs> I'm new to Instagram. People tell me somehow it's good for me. But like Twitter and like everything else on the internet, I'm not sure how this benefits me other than people looking at pictures. So uh, it's Instagram.com slash Sports. You can see a picture of a guy de-icing a prop right next to me. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Barry Katz, you've been a manager in this business for 30 damn years. 30. What advice Jesus. do you give somebody starting out? Because people, John Heffern and I said, like, if somebody said, how do you write a joke? We have, I have no idea. I have no idea how to write a joke. But you, as a manager, you do have, like, applicable things to tell. My only thing I tell people is just do it. Just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. If you're doing a play in... Des Moines, Iowa, keep doing that. Get another play. Get another play. Like, just keep doing it. What's your advice to people starting out? Well, I think you, you, you hit on something right away. Now, first of all, um, there's no, there's no guarantee when you do it and do it and do it that you're going to make it, but that's the only way. Hold that, on a second. I didn't say, it, it, no, it, no, I'm, I'm not disputing. Maybe not make it. But if you, it's this is all from David Mamet's book, True and False, yeah. which you can buy. Hit that Amazon banner, jmore.com. Clear, clear your cookies. True and False is the book I live by. Correct. If you want to act, act. Correct. Fuck, make it. Do you want to act or do you want to make it? Because if you want to, David Mamet wrote in that book, he had a friend that turned down a play that was 16 weeks in Chicago because he wanted to hang around LA in pilot season. And David Mamet said he was confounded. He goes, but they're offering you work as an actor. And the guy was like, yeah, but it's pilot season. Might have been Montana. He didn't say who it was, but I got to guess it was Joe. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing that... Um, it, it, if you're in a situation where you are uh, doing it, um, America speaks. America will tell you whether you're doing things right or you're doing things that aren't going to get you where you want to go. And Mostly I'll, America will tell you when you're doing things wrong, even if you're doing them right. Yes, they will. But uh, let me let me see, tell you what I mean when I say America speaks. Okay. So... Let's just use a few examples. Let's take uh, Angela Johnson. If you don't know who Angela Johnson is, she's a comedian. She also was on Mad TV for a little bit. But she was basically not really working any of the major circuits. She this is a great wasn't example. making a lot of money. She was, you know. Maddie, do you know who she is? No, I do not. Sells out every show she does. Sells out every show she does. And I don't want to step on your story. It might be too late. Too late. But uh, <laughs> Ryan Sickler and I were at Cobbs in San Francisco. She was there the weekend after me. You know what her credit was on the marquee? YouTube's Angela Johnson. Thank you so much. That's where I'm going here. Mad TV, all TV, like 50 TV credits. No, no, no. She's got that one thing she did on YouTube that everybody yeah. knows. I'm so, like, so, so Angela Johnson, you know, she was recording, I think it was at the Ice House or whatever, and she just decided to record one of her five or seven minute pieces which was one of her favorites but and it was getting a great response when she was doing it but she was doing it for 30 50 100 people maybe 200 people on a good night so she put this clip of uh her nail salon bit where she reenacts the vietnamese people at the nail salon bit very very tone-esque of buddy hackett's famous chinese waiter routine but you know i'm not saying or she, my nail salon bit or your nail salon or dad bit. fan's nail salon bit there's yeah, not but. too many avenues you can go down when you're mocking the vietnamese <laughs> do you want square or round yeah so she puts it up on the internet and well, I, mean, I got a new spin on it bro i got them all on bikes tens of mil <laughs> <laughs> hold on <laughs> Ring, ring, ring. You want tandem? You want wheelie? <laughs> Brick doesn't hold the mic to his face to laugh. And we're going to talk about that, too. All right. What, so, wheelies? Yeah, we're going to talk about the differences. So she does this. Tens of millions of people watch it. All of a sudden, she's, she's getting the improv gigs. Okay. Now she's selling out the improvs everywhere she goes. Now she gets the call from Mad TV. 
because she did that. I'll give you another example. Bo Burnham, a 17-year-old kid in his bedroom in New Hampshire or wherever he is. Jacking off and with sweat the guitar sock, man. on and playing and just playing into these silly, unique, fun songs that are like people seem to enjoy. And there's 300,000 other motherfuckers who are playing on their bed with a guitar. But this guy, 50 million views for his thing. All of a sudden, he's getting offered a Comedy Central special. He's like, um, kind of like Bob Newhart when Warner Brothers Records asked him to do a record. He's like, uh, I, I don't do stand up. I've never gone on stage in front of an audience before. That's okay, Bob. That's okay, Bo. Just do the special. And he does a, a Comedy Central special, then he sells out all over the place. Then sooner or later, Judd Apatow was asking him to write songs for his movie. And that's what happens when I, when I say that America... This is the first generation where you can do it in your bedroom with a guitar. Like when, you, when your mom used to be like, you got to get outside and get some fresh air. <laughs> mom, I'm making myself a career with Judd Apatow right now, Ma. By the way, Maddie... Uh, Angela Johnson nail salon bit is four minutes and 20 seconds long. I want you to guess how many YouTube views it has. Um, let me see. 20,000. I'm going to say 50 million. Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, okay. Three, three and a half million. 29 million. Okay. From a, a nail salon bit. Uh, see, I was going to say something like that, but then your face made me backtrack to 20,000. Well, yeah, because he had already said millions of hits. So I just want to keep going on this. <laughs> Sorry. So and by the, the way, I apologize for kicking the shit out of your Angela Johnson story. I didn't realize. Don't that worry was, about I it. didn't realize your Angela Johnson story it was my Angela Johnson. Oh, I just thought of this about Angela Johnson story. It's okay, because we're going to go one step further with that. Whoa. So put her on a bike. Your podcast. Okay. okay. You decide to start doing a podcast. How many people were doing podcasts when you started doing it? Thousands. Thousands. Tens of thousands. And you look, if you were to do research about the people who were doing them then and how many people had listened to their podcasts, you started, like most people listening today as an actor, an actress, or whatever you're doing, you started at zero. Zero. It didn't matter if you won an Academy Award or sucked a homeless guy's dick behind a dumpster the day before. It was zero, zero. You got in front of the mic and you started your first one. With you. You were my first guest. I was the first guest. It was in, I, I still one of the great proudest moments of my life being your first guest on this oh, podcast. Sweetheart. I'm serious. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that this week. Not for <laughs> me. You never heard <laughs> Not it. Not for me. Because you know why? We fucking communicate. That's right. And ever, I was saying this to Brian Callen the other day on the phone. We're going to get right back to your point. Don't worry, everybody. I said, I don't mind when people fire their managers. What makes me insane is the eight months that you kept that you wanted to fire a manager in your head alone and didn't communicate to your manager, I don't like that you're doing this, 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 and this. There's no other business model where you keep the, look, I don't know, I'm closing the doors in the car wash, but don't say anything to anybody because they might fix it and we might make a profit. That's right. One of my favorite stories about that, and we're going to get back to your podcast. You're going to love this, is that Dennis Leary, okay, one, it was one of my good friends, and I still uh, communicate with him, but not as much as I used to, unfortunately. But when he was in Boston, I gave him the Thursday night show at my club. He wasn't really working. I gave him the Thursday night show. Play it against Sam's? I played against Sam's. And he was just in, he was a guy who just did it his own way. Like he would put Janine Garofalo on every show. And she wasn't doing well every show. And come on. And, and I'd go up to him after like 10 weeks. I said, Dennis, do you think maybe you should, you know, try somebody else or do whatever? Only time he ever got mad at me. Fuck you. She's funny. I like her. She'll be on my show every week. Or you can cancel me from this show. And he had no other shows. But anyway, so he got hot because, like all of you should do, he wrote something for himself. No cure for cancer. When things weren't going well, his father passed away. He wrote his own show, got on Showtime, took off, one-person show in the theaters, and it was insane. He got The Ref and all those movies. But then, it was great in The Ref. But man. then he got an offer for a movie called Tooth by Sea with Sandra Bullock. He got a, I think it was a five million dollar offer. Oh, what his, a prick! His agent, his, I hate him. His now. agent, James Dixon, said, "I don't think you should do this movie. Uh, this is a, you were going to get the offer." I would fire James Dixon after don't, I got my five million dollar check. Don't do Manny. this. Don't do this movie. 
So Jake, uh, hold on, Matt. I, I offer you five million dollars to jerk off a dog. I'm put on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, but it'll get fifty more people saw Angela Johnson's nail salon <laughs> bit on YouTube than saw Two If by C, <laughs> starring Dennis Leary and uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. So I say to you, Maddie. I'm going to have you jerk off a homeless guy and we're going to put it up on the internet. It's going to get 50 million hits, but I'm going to give you $5 million. Yeah. I, I say yes. I, I would do it for free. But Barry's I would, your for, re- I would do it for a hot dog. <laughs> being serious. I know you're being serious. Barry says to you, you can't jerk off homeless guys for $5 million, <laughs> man. You've got a great career ahead of you, man. No, I'd take it in a, in a heartbeat. Great. Let's so, so let's keep going here. So Dennis takes the movie. The movie bombs. He fires James Dixon. <laughs> That's the best I, part of the story. I call up stupid I, James I, Dixon. I, I, I hear James Dixon <laughs> represented John John Stewart, Ray Romano. You know all these you know amazing packages of things, and I call up Dennis right when I hear the news because James called me and said he fired me. I said Dennis how. How can you fire James Dixon? I mean, your career's going great. He told you not to do that movie. And there was a pause on the end of the phone. You could hear Dennis with a cigarette because he always smoked. It was like, <sighs> Barry, I can't fire myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's am- you know, it's like when a baseball team sucks balls, the old adage is you can't fire 25 guys. Like the team sucks. The manager may be a great manager, but you can't fire all twenty five guys on the team. So you go manager, you can't fire that's fucking that's great. right. So let's go back to you. So right. you're similar to Angela and Bo with the podcast because here you start, it's zero zero. There's ten thousand, twenty thousand people doing podcasts. They're getting like five hundred people listening, three hundred, whatever it is. You make a leap of faith. You start. You you admittedly are a technological disaster. I don't know. You right. can't print a script. <laughs> you don't have a printer. That you can't. You, you just not. You're not. I'm like Paulie and Goodfellas. You have to come to my house to give me a message. Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> true. Twitter. You're like bear. I don't understand. I'm quitting Twitter. I don't. You're not. You didn't even get a smartphone until probably a year ago. Uh, yeah. What's the point of getting a smartphone if a dummy's working it? <laughs> So here he is. It's not a bad line. <laughs> he starts the pod. <laughs> Maybe I should film myself saying that. Put it on YouTube and see how many hits we get. <laughs> he starts this podcast, okay? And it's been about, let's say, a year and three months, okay? Tell the audience how many people have downloaded this podcast. 14 million. 14 million. America speaks. They tell you when you're doing what they love and they'll tell you when you're doing what they don't love and there are many comics out there who are tremendous comics you look at somebody like christopher titus the guy is a tremendous comic he has five hour specials he's almost like stephen wright he's like a car driving down the highway at 65 miles an hour guy never goes down never goes up it just keeps the same lane of audience work in those comedy clubs for like 10 years one of the rarest things there is is a guy who can keep it going like that but he never creates anything like that thing like i'm gonna give you one more example where somebody like chris bill burr was working these comedy clubs not really doing great but has it's had a steady audience but not becoming a star one day he's on a show in Philadelphia. He's on with a bunch of guys. It's a rowdy crowd. They're booing him off the stage. Somebody picks up their camera and starts filming. And it was all an Opie and Anthony show. Opie and Anthony story. show. He snaps. He says, fuck you. The only thing that's in this town that's famous is somebody who's not even a human being, Rocky or whatever the hell. And he just went at them and he won them over in that past five minutes that went on YouTube and millions of hits. And then he started selling out comedy clubs and theaters and things like that. Now, that was a fluke, but it happened. And that's what took him to the next level. And somebody like Titus needs something that he creates that takes that thing because he's already got that audience. But they're still saying, yeah, we love you. We love you sort of like we loved Carlin to a 
a slightly lesser drawing extent, but we don't like you enough to sell out theaters and arenas. We love you in like a comedy that. club way, that's not right. in a theater way. That's right, because you're not having... Brian Regan, Jim Gaffigan, we love you Because we're not passing on 